Wow, wow, wow. I just got back from the enchanting land of Merida, Mexico and surrounding Yucatan Peninsula and I cannot believe all the amazingness there is to behold down there. From stylish European architecture to Maya ruins to the best food and even a little art making along the way. I, and I just can't wait to share with you this magical land. Welcome friends, it's Kaylee Bird. And if you're like me and have only recently heard of Merida, Mexico, then you are in for a real treat. I had no idea what to expect. First stop on this journey is going to be our absolutely positively gorgeous hotel, El Palacito Secreto, the Little Secret Palace. And let me tell you, it really did feel like we were staying at a palace staying in here. Everything was just perfect to the T. The staff was so incredible. There were so many beautiful accents, like these gorgeous Art Nouveau lamps, beautiful wood details, and just completely scrumptious surroundings. I also really adored this gorgeous tile work that I noticed here and a lot of other places that really reminded me of cross stitch. Interesting since cross stitch originated in Mexico. and get a load of our room. Wow, ceilings that are like 14 feet tall. Can't even believe it. And you know how I feel about a nice outdoor shower. They didn't have those here, but the shower was about a third skylight. How cool. Right outside our little doorway was the second pool that was so gorgeous. I actually wound up doing a painting right here in the evenings. It was really a wonderful way to finish up the day. Mom and I would go out sightseeing and learning all kinds of amazing things and eating wonderful food, and then come back for a delicious specialty cocktail by our private bartender and just enjoy the evening by the pool. Not sure if you've ever tried these amazing traveling gouache sets by Himi. If you notice, I actually did not wind up taking the lids off of all the gouache paints as I had read somewhere that Although it's a nice set of gouache, sometimes if you take all the lids off and then re-put them in the package and the package goes on its side, things can mix. So I was really trying to prevent that from happening because I just got this traveling gouache set to take here and on my next few trips this year. So this time I had tried not to peel the lids all the way off the paints. It kind of wound up being a little bit of a pain in the neck, but at least nothing ever got mixed. By the way, if you've never tried this brand of gouache paint, I have seriously fallen in love. It is so smooth and creamy, yet such thick opacity, and I just love having them wet all the time. That's one of the things that I hated most about painting with my own little gouaches in the tube, is that I was constantly having to reconstitute them. So now I've got this wonderful Hemi set with the spray water bottle, and everything is perfect. And what do you know, I wasn't the only one painting. Mom got a great view too, and check out her beautiful completed work. I love it so much. Like mother, like daughter, what can I say? And each morning before our next grand adventure, we had the most unbelievably delicious, authentic Mexican breakfast right next to the beautiful crystal clear blue pool. Oh my gosh, I wish I could start every day like this. Our first day there was a Sunday, and we really lucked out because every Sunday morning, the local town government shuts down this beautiful wide historic avenue, the Paseo de Monteo, for what they call La Bici Ruta, which is just the bike route. Essentially, they shut down all of traffic for a number of blocks and allow bicycle riders just to enjoy the big wide streets. It was a perfect way to really see a whole lot of the town all in one go as soon as we got there. I love that the town does this every single week. This was obviously taken from a car ride we took one day, but it really gives a great idea of how the greater city looked. If you notice, there is literally wrought iron on every building. It was incredible. They said something about having some sort of special trade 
with France back in the day. So like every building here has gorgeous wrought iron and I just love the European style buildings with the bright tropical kind of paint. So this one's the first of a few drawings I'll share with you that I actually did back at my house. I was so inspired by so much that I saw in Merida and I definitely could not have spent the time really getting to know and painting all of the scenes that I would have loved to in just eight or nine days. So I came home and did a few pieces in a wonderful little zigzag book, which you'll see the whole thing at the very end. It's so cool. All of these pieces will go together. This one is obviously a street scene. I was just so inspired by all the colors and wrought iron and just the, the cute quaintness, as I said. Um, I actually decided to incorporate um, two different images in this one that I took. One of the place we stayed, El Palacito Secreto, and also just another street scene that was pretty close by. I just liked all of the little greenery and all the little details in both these places. So this is kind of a made up place, but I think it turned out really well. One of the things I loved about Merida and actually all the towns we visited where they would have these wonderful little squares in each neighborhood. So this one was actually the Plaza Grande, the biggest main square. And when we would walk here, there were all kinds of wonderful things to see. Definitely a touristy area, but lots of locals here hanging out and doing business and eating good foods and that kind of stuff. We got to take a peek in what they call the government palace, which I'm not used to government buildings being so bright and colorful and full of murals, nor is it really a palace because they are definitely a democracy, but still an awesome building. Like the Merida Cathedral is up here, which is a massive early colonial cathedral with huge stone walls which you know my art history professor self just loves so much. And it had one of the largest statues of Jesus I've ever seen. I think it was about 20 or 30 feet tall. Dang. Also on the plaza, we took a visit into the Museo Casa Monteo, which was basically a house built in 1542 belonging to Francisco de Monteo, who also the main road was named after. He was a Spanish conquistador who founded the town. Basically, it was just a tour around his house the way it was set up at the time. It was so interesting to see not only Spanish influence, but a lot of French and Italian, not just here, but in much of the architecture and interiors in some of the old fancy houses we walked into. But I love that even within these old classical buildings, there would often be collections of Maya artwork or artifacts. And this one was no different. There was a wonderful collection of these interesting morphing animals that we noticed throughout the city over and over again. Another museum like that was the Palacio Canton, actually the Canton Palace, which was a, another historic home transformed into a museum. This one was strictly Maya artifacts though, and they were quite interesting. from hand carved to hand formed to even ritualistic head molding. There was some very interesting things to see here that had been found in the numerous ruins all around the area. And speaking of the Maya, we learned from our guide, who was in fact a Maya person, that the Maya language and culture is still alive and well, and there are many traditional Maya villages in the area. He actually drove us around so we could see some of the amazing homes and architecture that folks were still using today. There is a misconception that the Maya culture has been long gone and past, but that is definitely not true. It is alive and well throughout the Yukonan Peninsula. And speaking of the Maya culture, of course we had to take a day trip to Chichen Itza, which is the largest Maya ruin 
in all of Yucatan. It was unbelievable. And I am so fortunate that we had this amazing guide with us because he told us all about the history and the different buildings we were seeing and what certain temples meant for what and about how the sun sets and sun rises on the certain equinoxes. He showed us where you can clap and hear the cool echoes. It was just everything that was so, so, so cool. Going to Chichen Itza was definitely at the top of my list. I have been wanting to see some authentic Maya or Aztec ruins for years. And I've seen some really amazing Native American adobe structures out west, but I have never seen ancient st stone structures that weren't European. I've been all over Italy and France and seen a lot of Roman architecture that was really, really impressive, but seeing other cultures and how they constructed these huge, amazing, epic stone structures that have last hundreds and hundreds of years was just really eye-opening and enlightening. Apparently, there are literally thousands of these stone pyramids and they're constantly discovering new ones. Our guide told us that basically if you go into any jungle that hasn't been cleared yet, you will find these structures. And so it was just incredible to know that of the thousands they've already found, there's still so many more. And of course, the largest pyramid of Chichen Itza was very impressive. But at the end of the day, I actually wound up really liking the smaller ones a little bit more because you could get a little more up close and personal with them. And I really loved how they had these amazing, immense sort of snake heads at the bottom of every staircase. These would be one of the areas that the setting sun would illuminate so the snake would almost look like he was slithering down the side of the pyramid. Everything there was just totally mind-blowing. After our hot morning exploring the ruins, we got to go to a cenote, which I had never heard of those before. Apparently there are these crystal clear underground rivers all throughout the Yucatan Peninsula. And there are hundreds, if not thousands of these sinkholes all throughout the area where you can actually access and swim in these underground rivers. It was the perfect way to cool off. On another day, we were going out for a boat trip on a biological reserve to visit the migrating flamingos and were greeted by these amazing little bioreserve raccoon ambassadors. They were not like raccoons in the States. These were like little cats. They were so sweet and tiny and gentle. Oh my gosh, cutest raccoons ever. It's the craziest thing ever. You're on this huge giant river waterway and all of a sudden way off in the distance, you just start seeing these very vivid little strips of pink. And then as we would slowly approach, you just start seeing thousands upon thousands upon thousands of flamingos. And they're all honking and eating and splashing and taking off, taking flight. Oh my gosh, taking flight was like the funniest thing ever. It was just so epic to see these guys. I mean, I never thought in a million years that I would see flamingos out in the wild. I've seen them in zoos before, of course, but I've never seen one out in the wild where I actually got to see it take off in its natural habitat. It was mind blowing. Then on the way back, we took a little trip through the mangroves and I got to swim in another cenote that had come up in the riverway system. And as I was treading water, when the most miraculous thing happened, there were these large birds called tiger egrets. The mom comes up and starts feeding the two young that were on the bank right in front of me, like five feet in front of my face. That must be a female and two males. No, it's the, it's the mom on your body. Oh, it's the mom and the baby. The mom and the, the baby one. Oh, yeah, he just 
And after that amazing, enlightening, eye-opening, shape-shifting, mind-blowing day, <laughs> you know I had to include the flamingos in my book. Oh, yes. Oh yeah, makes sense. Ooh, got some good food around here, I bet. This is the little park, the main square, the local market. This is the market of food. And here you right on the side, that's the okay. vegetable market. Yeah, this is the main square plaza, the city hall building. Ah, and, Salastone, there you go. And one more block, that's the sea place. Oh yeah, there's then we went through another tiny beach town to have one of the freshest seafood lunches of my entire life. I mean, how's that for a view from the lunch table? And after lunch, of course, can't resist having a quick dip in the ocean. There were a bunch of these little stray dogs around. I don't know, they were sweet and friendly and looked well fed. So town dogs, I'm not sure. Everybody seemed to kind of give them little bites and snacks and treats. It was really cute. We even got a little visit from a couple of dolphins. How perfect. Okay, now I kind of saved one of my favorite things for last. This was the town of Isamel that was all painted yellow. Like, the whole thing. It was so amazing. A real artist's dream to behold. Actually featured an old Franciscan monastery that was built right on top of a Maya pyramid. So like walking up these steps, we are literally walking on a Maya pyramid. You know I had to paint this picture-perfect, picturesque town. And if you're wondering why it's all yellow, the story goes that in 1993, Pope John Paul came to this teeny tiny, very Catholic little Mexican town for a visit. And the folks there were so excited at the prospect of their Holy Father coming that they wanted to paint the whole town yellow to show that they were the sun city, right? The light of God. And so he came and it was this big, huge deal. And afterwards, they liked it so much. And I imagine the tourist dollars didn't hurt either, but they just loved the yellow so much. They have continued to paint it this beautiful, vivid saffron yellow color ever since. Next time I come back to Merida, I want to spend like a day or two just in this town alone. It was so picture perfect. I mean, quintessential artist paradise. I could seriously keep talking for hours and hours about how incredible and delicious and beautiful this town was. It was so safe, literally a total paradise. By the time we were leaving, I was actually calling it Meridise. So if I could recommend one dream vacation spot, Merida would be it. It's literally got everything you could hope for. If you had fun living vicariously through my Merida vacation, make sure to check out some of these other art and travel vlogs from Hawaii and an upcoming Costa Rica trip will be included here too. I actually won't have a video coming out next week because I'll be in Costa Rica for two weeks, but I will be adding a Costa Rica art and travel vlog as well pretty soon. Thanks for being here today, folks. Enjoy the rest of my journeys. Have a great one.